He's got you here with first team coming up, Florida Mutineers. Yeah, Prasini, he's got to be elite again. He dominated in the last series. He's playing absolutely lights out. You know, he's pretty hard on himself. Last night we saw him tweeting about how he can be a great player like he was last year. And I think we saw it in their very last match in the Royal Ravens. And if he can do that again, these guys can put up a big fight. Indeed they can. And of course, on the other side of the stage, game fuel keys to victories for Chicago Huntsman. I got to say it again. Don't rely on Scump and S&D. So far in the game fives that they went to where it's gotten a little bit scary, it's been Scump. He's been going off in every single search and destroy, but you can't rely on that and our cities and form are both top 10 for hard point kd and it's it's important to keep in mind that they are two and four in their last six hard points they were undefeated at some point during the last tournament so these guys are gonna have to turn around their hard point and it's gonna start with four more rc's being consistently dominant in hard point. indeed and back to back we have our two teams u.s air force quick scope for you on your screen here we go it's, it's hard to sometimes read into some of these stats because we have seen that it doesn't matter how you're doing how you've been doing it depends on how you perform on that stage right there and then. And we've seen a reverse week come through from Atlanta. We saw Rocker nearly take it. But what is going to be happening here with the Mutineers? Uh, wait, I, I'm sorry, Lottie. I know this is going to derail things a little bit, but I uh -oh. just noticed it when I looked at the cake. I saw Momo's name. I don't want to talk about numbers. I want to talk about words. Momo, it's his birthday today. Momo in Japanese means peach. Georgia, peach. Georgia, peaches. Georgia. Atlanta. Atlanta is winning the entire event. Oh, wow. Okay. What a, what a great analyst. Here. Amazing yeah. analyst here yeah. I got next to me. So what you're saying is this, this is fate. This is absolute fate that's happening right Your now. Your Call of Duty mind is unmatched. It, honestly, <laughs> I, I feel privileged to be up here with such a, a great analyst. A here. renowned the, the analyst. The mutant is. The mutant is. I'm just like, they have to forget who they're playing against. I think they have to put the names out of their head. I think Mutineers are capable of it. They're going to cause an upset potentially, but I actually think they test the Huntsman. And I think what they need to do is shut down kind of the SMGs and the S&D. That's my go-to. I think they're going to get 3-0. You know, you never know, you never know. But I, I want to hear from, from two gentlemen who, who are the, the narrative here for this game, this matchup. Maven, what do you think about this one? I, I think I got dumber listening to Rich. Yeah, no. he, he is an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that, that is that is what yeah. I'm thinking going into this. But no, uh, we're excited for this because if we learned anything in the last series, you would have thought FaZe was the heavy favorite. That goes five games. That was highly competitive. Here, I think we're thinking the same thing. Like, Huntsman should dominate. But I don't know, man. I, I, Florida have been coming alive. They've been improving over the course of the weekend. Yeah, it's, uh, they, they were my pick to get top four, so I'm excited to see Florida improve because the first match we watched with them against London, it was it was boring at times, yep. right? They were just being out uh, outslayed, but they woken up, and now we saw the potential of Florida. Well, let's introduce these teams to kick it off. Your Florida Mutineers. Thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. The Mutineers will go in with a small lead. The Mutineers will have the advantage. Now they're on your point. Look how close it is, Joe. A millimeter! What a round! What a round! Mutineers have got to be on point because on the other side of the stage, your London Home Series champs. These are your Chicago Huntsmen. He's going to get caught, but they line up for Scott! The king! This is dangerous! Ten in a row! Gunless keeps on rolling. Nine! Formal hits the shot. I think it doesn't have to move. Oh my lord! You saw the tweets, Joe. I think it was formal talking about, you know, we were a little flat. We have to hit new levels today. I think it was like two hours ago. Yeah. It's like the new levels have been hit. They're feeling good. It's Sunday. And you, these are Sunday players, man. These are guys that are going to play in championships and look to perform at their best on championship Sunday. This is a scary matchup for the Mutineers. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely is. I mean, we just talk about talent-wise. It, it's pretty one-sided, right? It goes towards Chicago. They've been in this position before. They, they won just a few weeks ago. But as we're loading up here on a zero cave map number one, this is where Chicago has been so darn good. And one of the big things we haven't even touched on, 
It's the battle of the brothers, right? You've got Arcides going up against Pristini, longtime teammates, world champs together. Now for the first time this year, fighting against each other on the main stage. And with all the props that Arcides gets on Huntsman with them being the tournament winners, you know Pristini is wanting to come out and dominate within this particular matchup. But <laughs> you sort of alluded to it. Cave is very, very good for Huntsman. They're 3-0 and on it. It's an AR heavy map. They're going to have two out. They're going to Rocket. Huntsman, the favorite in map one for sure. Yeah, and I think we talked about, you know, Nameless touched on it on the keys of victory. Uh, I think formal needs to be formal. He had a slow day yesterday, and of course, at any moment, any of these guys can go off, but I just feel like he hasn't played to his full potential yet, but this is the map that he can do it. Well, it's gunless. Inside of yellow, looking for any angle he can find. Time thus far. Two mutineers who will be able to control that right side of the cave for the upcoming hard point will be the question we'll look at throughout the course of this. But the kill feed lights up white. Envoy picks up two, but look at that spawn yeah, in back right from the mutineers. I, I think Envoy went a little bit too deep. He went a, goes a little bit too far in, inside of that broken building, and that flips the spawn. So that, that's going to work out brilliantly for Florida, and they will take that all day. Plus, they're earning some time. And just like that, Mox knows he's going to have some pressure, does find one. Havoc will be here for the trade. And yeah, you. I mean, we, we know that can happen at so times. Did, it doesn't happen too often. Did you think that was a blessing or a mistake? Uh, that was a blessing. Yeah, I, I, I think that was a blessing. I mean, maybe Envoy gives a little too far, but I thought his team were controlling the, the side of the map that they wanted. And, well, if you're Florida, maybe you get blessed with the spawns a bit for a second. Now you need to turn it a time. You have to take advantage of situations like this when you're the underdog, when you're going up against the the previous champs looking to go back to back and so far so good inside of the hard point havoc locking it down the back on the truck is pristini but pristini matching up against his brother not the start he would like oh and six make it oh and seven to start he has to turn it around hey, you're up 11 so you feel okay but it's one of those things where your, your adrenaline is pumping as guys he's on a five spree the ars of florida they they have control it's a tough map for submachine gun players but even more for Pristini right here. That adrenaline's going. Slow things down. Let that game come to you. Find the first kill. Sometimes you're just playing a little too too fast. But it, even with that, with him 0-7, well, they're about to have a 30-point lead. His aggression is just funneling kills into Mox and Skies. So be it. It was five in a row for Mox. Now eight in a row before he drops for Skies. The ARs dominating here. Pristini, his fortunes maybe improve and the fact he gets the first on the board but right after that will get dropped now out to field we go huntsman set up inside the hard point as it's a four-man funnel between blue and yellow to try and get in towards the point they flood on through the question is do they find the opening the pressure hasn't worked his way to envoy quite yet because he'll swap to his pov and he takes the one-on-one -on -one at range there with the snap back as well it's a lovely double before he drops. And it's interesting now just taking a look at what teams are rolling. You have three ARs on the side of Chicago, which has worked out, but what does that mean? There's going to be a little bit more pressure from the Florida side where, yeah, maybe that's why Pristine is having that slow start because they're just playing a little bit quicker. But for Chicago, if you're going to run a three AR setup, when you're rotating and holding on, that has to turn into a good amount of points just because you're going to be a little bit slower than Florida with that pressure. And boy. Trying to play his life, but as he pushes the edge, nothing going. Now we'll get to the next rotation. Set up in cave early is at number one. You'll see Mox already all the way to the hard point as he'll have this strong AR position. It leads to easy pickings. Can't quite finish the kill, but Envoy in trouble early as they try to nade him off the spot. Smoke out as well as they'll have to funnel through that. That's that's great. Behind the smoke, they're able to pick up Mox, and that's the first step done. Now they all opt to soar forward, but it's Havoc trying to pick up the scraps. Not as easy to do with the MP5. Now it's going to fall to subs to try and make the play as Pristini floods on through. Nice bit of movement to stay up as Havoc looks over him. And for now, they've been able to hold for the pressure here from Huntsman. Yeah, what I talked about with those three ARs, Gunless, he immediately pulls out another MP5. So you'll see him rocking that, and we'll keep our eyes on that. But yeah, when you get inside a cave, Havoc, he's starting to heat on up. You see a look at the top left. I mean, they're on a, a 10 spree as a team before Mox gets taken down. And that was great from Havoc and Pristini, though. As soon as Mox drops, though, it becomes a close range battle. And those two, in tandem, pick up basically everybody on Huntsman, and they'll keep this lead. Now Florida as well, they, ha they have the backside forward cliff, so another opportunity to, to really get this to 80 points if they wanted to. Pristini, he's just going to try to stay 
alive on the hill. Tries to get pushed out, but Arsene is formal. They're just sitting here with those M4s. They're ready for him, but Frosty with some nice shots. Going to take one down, but formal still here. Yeah, the big thing, they got up to outpost, they can keep them by the hard point. Yes, you don't have the favorite spawns, but you've kept them from getting time. So the lead still sat around 40 throughout all of this. Nice little snap from Gunless as he comes through on the pinch. The back spawn now in for Huntsman with 20 seconds left. You're fine with that. If you're mutineers, you can set up for mid-map, start to focus on the next set of rotations, and enjoy whatever lead you have after this. You're going to get a bit closer if you're Huntsman, but... I mean, hell, Mutineer's out playing throughout that first half. Yes, he had the one blessed spawn towards oh, the back. Of case saying, what's the difference? It's about 40 points. What did Florida get off of that second hill? It was about 40 so points. So play him even outside of that blunder? Yeah, they're playing very well right now. They just took advantage of a situation that went their way. Chicago all the way towards the right side. This should be some free time for Pristini. And you'll think there'll be some uh, big focus from Huntsman to make sure they don't give up the right side of the map this time around. We touched on... Pristini's slow start early for Mutineers. The same could be said for Scump on the other side for Huntsman. He's 7-17 seven and 17 currently. Hasn't really been able to get anything going. And you see Havoc. We're going to have to keep our eyes on that arrow. He's going to try to flip those spawns. It's going to take a lot. It, it may not be until this hill is done, but his main focus right now is actually just to stay alive, yeah. and he's done it. They just due to again. Havoc's position, Havoc gets through. They aren't ready for it. The spawns flip. They're probably thinking to themselves, how the hell does this keep happening? And it's happened once again. Havoc is playing this the way we've seen Envoy play it, right? Just getting around, getting into a sneaky position. But now can Havoc stay alive? Because he's got three Chicago members pushing him. Yeah, they get the kills, though. They kill everybody with Havoc. So look how far off the team spawns due to the fact that the old hard point was still up. Those kills come a five seconds later. Maybe you're all right to hold the back, but Huntsman are there. They get the numbers, and they still hold on. So that is a crucial moment. What looked to be a disaster for Huntsman once again at Cape Side East has mellowed down for now as they look to answer back. And this could be, when this hard point is done, the first lead we've seen for Huntsman really since the get-go. Smokes are coming in. Those MP5s trying to fly on in. Yeah, it's just going to be tough. They're trying to just flood behind these smokes. We know how hard it is to get inside this cave hill. Trophy going down from Arsides. His brother takes down two of his teammates, and it's going to be a, you know, a nice little chunk of time for Florida. The problem is, is they actually flip the spawns. That's exactly what Chicago wants. You take a look at the mini-map. They're controlling this third hill towards field. Beautifully done by Chicago, but you still have that little edge right now for Florida. And look how far they've been able to push out. They're pushed out well, pushed out spiral, pushed out broken. Like... They have pushed this out massively and they'll leave one player inside of the hard point. So this should be some good time in the opening moments of this, especially if Envoy can finesse around mid-map. He's going to get caught by Skies as soon as he tries to get to the smoke. Three will fall. And now Mutineers will collapse. Arsides, the lone man, really in a position to make the play at Spiral as his teammates come off spawn. He gets laser beamed through a smoke, it looked like, from Frosty as he hits some clean shots. But it's Envoy with a nice two-piece there to open up the spiral side of the point and move on towards the hard point. And just taking a look at the ARs, I mean, Skies and Mox really doing a ton of work for the Florida side. Arsides, it's really him and Envoy. T2P right now, struggling a bit, but when they turn it on, that'll be scary for Florida because Chicago, with this scrap time, they're about to tie up this game. Yeah, Pristini since slow starts basically on even, right? What was yeah. he, like 0 and 8? Yeah, 0 and 9, 0 and 8. Right around even since that point. So he has stepped up. Three points separate these squads. We get back inside a cave. Frosty, that's brilliant. That he can take two down, well, three down with the nade as well before he falls. That'll delay the collapse even more for Huntsman and stop any kind of pinch attack. But now the flood comes on in through tunnels. Havoc, again, it's, it's a double. One player being able to pick up two is what's really going to stagger this push for Huntsman. First it was Frosty, then it was Havoc, right back to Frosty. These multi-kills so big for the Mutineers to hold on to this point. They just kept that number's advantage on every push. I mean, Chicago right now hasn't even gotten close to this hill, hasn't even contested. Continuous pressure out of the MP5s of Florida. They're playing their game. They forced Chicago to adjust to pull out another MP5 just due to the pressure they were putting on the map, and it has paid off. And yep. that's what you have to do. You have to be able to respond when we talk about it. You know, cave this map. Just making sure to lock down these big hills. That's probably the best hard point hold we've had on this particular map. What was it? Three points separating them? Now up to 50. What a job by the Mutineers. Now Huntsman.
in a world of trouble, but for them, at least they've got the setup inside of Alpo. It, Alpo. Skies is going to go on a five spree during this. He's at 33 and 18 as his hot start has it stopped. Havoc gets in from behind. Oh, shots everywhere results in a gunless kill as Mox hit every ounce of dirt. Just not gunless. Just kicking up dust everywhere behind outpost. Yeah, and again, you have these spawns with your Chicago. You're just not getting time. Well, Florida just, they continue to throw a smoke mid tunnel and, and there, someone is sneaking through. Someone is killing that player on the hill. So Chicago just hasn't been able to earn time. And you will take that. They've only cut this deficit by 20 on this hill. And now you're going to keep them spawn trapped towards that right side of the mini map. Formal with the big kill on Mox will give them some breathing room. I think it's all going to come down to KB. And for Huntsman, it has been a struggle, especially in the transition to that point. They well, got unlucky the first time through. Maybe got a little bit luckier the second time as they were able to fight back after Havoc got in behind. It's got to be cleaner this time if they're going to rally the comeback. But now into the third set of rotations. We'll get right back to Town Center. The Flood in yellow for Huntsman. Should give them the angles to get them out of the hard point for now. And I think Chicago has done a, a great job because if you're Florida, I, I think what most teams do in this situation is put so much pressure to try to win on this hill where you, you sort of force Chicago to pick and choose. Do we want to fight for spawns or do we want to go for it? But Florida has actually just opted to continue to put pressure on the bottom side of the map to try to put spawns for KBs, and it may pay off. There's one player left alive. That's a big one-on-one -on -one win by Mox, and that could do it. But Chicago, you see they're spawning right on the hill. Yeah, they had a huge 2v2. Backside of Cave to try and fight for this, but Huntsman can still rally. They can still do it here. Down 35 with 50 seconds to hold here on Cave East. Into the backside goes Mutineers. They've got the numbers here through the back, and it's Mox on a 5 shoot before he falls, but Scump, Gunless, Formal. They, they can chop win it here. Them they down. can win it here. They can just barely close out this game on Cave East with a flawless hold. Where'd the separation come from the Mutineers? It was the perfect hold on the opposite side of the cave. Now Huntsman, perhaps their turn to answer. You've got to get some kind of contest. You have to get some pressure they onto got the enough. point. I think they got enough where it's, it has to flip. Yeah, wow, Chicago just recognized enough. it. Just enough. One player gets through, is able to prone behind the smoke and find the kill. There's now the lead, Florida. Though. There's the lead. It all comes down to this rotation over to this third hill. Couple of players going all the way through Cave West around that well side. The fifth player now going to hop off the point. Five needed for Huntsman. Sixteen needed for Mutineers. Mutineers are inside. It's in for the kills. One on one. Now the collapse comes in. Into the point go the Huntsman. It could end right here, but Mutineers showing just enough life to keep it up. It's contested on the point. Who's going to win these key gun fights inside? It's scuffed but a five spree. Still just through the smoke. No one able to find the time. Mutineers now second by second get closer to closing it out, but Huntsman fight in. And Huntsman with the final dagger. Get the nine point victory. Map one to Chicago. It all comes down to those gunfights on rotation. There were three in a row for the Huntsman. That allows Envoy, Scump, and RCs to jump on that hill, get the contest in. Then the numbers flow on through. But I still look, you look at that first hill on the third rotation. Florida, they were in striking distance, but they put so much emphasis on trying to flip the spawns for second, where I, I think they put themselves in a tougher situation than, than they so need. So you're saying you get an extra 15 to 20 it's points done. there. It's over. Who cares if you lose KVs? Exactly. You're able to win the game. You'd have enough to win it. All yeah. right. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. But let's take a look at the overall stat card from that map one. What a nail biter it was. Skies drops 43 on the map. Frosty right behind him at 38, but it's just it's not boy, enough. With an MP5, he's doing, like Skies is doing that with an AR on cave, which we sort of expect. There's so much pressure. You have the early setups. It's free kills, five spree after five spree. But Envoy with 41 and big impact kills towards the end of the game. Well, we're going to take a look at the scuff play of the game, and it's the final moments. This one was an absolute nail biter, and I think 
think as a fan, kind of keep your eyes on the minimap and how this plays out. But Joe, you mentioned those big kills in transition. There's one. Yeah, so j just watch as this game sort of slows down. You're going to see two Chicago players worth the top left side of your map. They're trying to go all the way through. Everything's good right now if you're Florida. You have this setup that you want, but now these are where the big kills come in. Arsene finds one, and boy, he got a kill right before this. Then he gets a second. That allows him to get on the hill. And at this point, it's almost like chaos, right? Florida, they just have to flood on through, but it's those rotation gunfights that give them a chance. They only needed two more seconds in the <laughs> trades to go the way of Chicago. It was like part of it almost felt like actually climatic in the sense that it was so hard to follow the action because of the smokes, right? Like the smokes on the yeah, point, you had no it idea. got so chaotic. It's just like, who's going to be left when the dust settles? When the smoke dissipates, who's going to be left standing inside of the hard point? And it was Chicago, Arsides, and Envoy, those huge kills in transition to set them up in the hard point and close out those final seconds. But let's take a look at the U.S. Army schedule before we get ready for the map to search and destroy to show you what is yet to come. And this is our final semi-final after this we've got game day we've got the hype battle let's go to the final of the phase tournament that's been going on all weekend long and then right into the atlanta home series final atlanta lying in wait who's going to join him is it going to be huntsman is it going to be florida we're trying to figure out yeah yeah and the hype battle it's going to be what scissors and quick going up against blaze and dirty that'll be following this match they played i believe what all day yesterday all day today to narrow i don't know how many it started with 16 players or whatever it was to get to this point but we're down to our final four and we'll see them fight it out as the teams get prepped for the grand final. It's been cool just to see how many phase people have been here. Like right, right behind our screens, basically in camera. There's there's this long line because everyone's waiting to get signatures and photos with a lot of the phase guys that are here. I saw Nick Merckx. I saw uh, you know Scissors is here. Pamaj has been around. Like all these uh, big names just over the years for Call of Duty or just uh, well gaming in general. Yeah, it's awesome to see. But in the R cloth peak, and when you and I looked at the first three maps. Well, I asked you, what do you think looking at this? And I think you said, I, I said 3-0, yep. right? I mean, just, just based off of what we've seen from Chicago, our cave, it was a close one, but they clutched up. Our club peak, I mean, heck, if you watched the, the London home series, you know how good Scump can be on this map. And I mean, Chicago just have so many reps. The Petro Dom, that has just been Envoy's playground. Chicago up 1-0. Let's get underway with map two as mutineers try to get revenge in Chicago, try to put them to bed. With 30 seconds left, less in these rounds, you'll see a lot more early aggression from the offense and it's right up mid map they'll go. There's an opening into the B site and they're able to get right on in. Well, almost right on in, right outside the door. <laughs> Now they'll work their way into sight. So Florida played this earlier today against London and dropped that one one to six. And you know Chicago was probably watching it. Chicago on the other end, the last two they have won. Led the way by Skump, of course, that big tent spree we can remember, but bomb planted, Envoy inside the side, able to find that first blood onto Pristini. Mox just trying. You know, I mean, when you go that fast and into round one, they, they don't have that silence yet, right? So it's going to be so hard to retake this site without that. How many times have we seen that gunfight where you're trying to work your way from top? It's just not not easy. Usually somebody pre-aim there. Who's left? Havoc and Frosty. With no time to work with. Frosty last alive. No time to defuse, but he'll take as many Huntsman players down as he possibly can. Those are some quality shots onto our cities across mid-map, but that kill's not going to matter. And it's just such a fast execute. If that player inside the site and Christine gets taken down without finding one, like, there's so many positions they have to check, right? Mox has to come on in with an M4, has to open the door as well. That's free information for Chicago. Just not enough time on the clock. A good round one from them. Have you seen any really big differences in how the teams have been playing it, offensive or defensively, since the, the round timer change? Yeah, it feels like earlier commits to sites, right? Just not a lot of play around mid-map, trying to out-rotate the defense. Anything for the defense, really, or really just all the pressure to the offense? I think it, it all just comes down to that, that offensive side. Sneaky from Scump. Leads to a first blood, but Havoc with a headshot trade. Nyon instantly. 
Varsity is just trying to get away, but not able to do so. Three versus three. Gunless is going all the way around, and I think Florida is ready for it. There's two players hunting him down. Yeah, he, he's going to take a little bit of damage. At least finds one in disguise. A nice little shot onto him. Just barely gets that final bullet in before he falls. Now you have a 2v2. Just 30 seconds to work with. Christini, your bomb carrier, going to have to make a decision. Yeah, and his teammate is so far away from him. Well, he's just wondering, how do I get to A? Like, he knows he's safe there. He's just got to get across. Not the funnest of runs, but due to the wrap back, yep. he gets a good timing on the time. Timing helps. He should be able to get this down. Nobody's starting to push over now, but over the top, what a nade from Envoy. They're just going for a check onto the side. He's able to connect, and now it's a 1v1. He probably thinks that was from, from their side, but that was all the way from the middle of the map, and Envoy's, he's gone. He's not going to get the bomb in. The nade saves the day. I can't believe that, because if you're looking at the mini map, you're like, oh, they got a free plant, right. and bang, just over the top, the nade there from Envoy. Is. Here it is, look at I'm that. I'm so glad we get to see this. Ooh. Look at the Kobe onto the site. What a nade that is. And you saw Mox, like he's looking around like, where, where does that come in? He, he's not expecting that from, being from the middle staircase. That was nasty. <laughs> I thought they had it safe, like they're good. Utility's probably exhausted at this point. Nope. No, sir. Two O Huntsman. Doesn't look like they're going to give up that angle as Arcity's patiently holding it. But this will be the big difference in the round count. Yes, you can play slow here, but not for long. Just not for long. You're going to have to expend utility and look for an opening, and here it goes. But you saw three different aids toss over the top of the trophy. He's going to eat most of it. Arcity's still hoping somebody peeks him and he can send them to the next round. That's just not an easy shot as they still have a trophy and pressure. Let's but who's this pushing mid? Yeah, formal. He's going to use Deddy. You see that starting to drain bottom right. He's trying to find anything he can to help his teammates out. But Envoy, Scump, they're going to get taken down. But Formal's into a good position. His Deddy ran out. His Deddy ran out. I yeah, thought he was going to be hurt. He got there. He got there. He got into that spot. Now his teammates, they have to go. They have to help him out. Formal finds two. Gunless with another one. And now we're down to a two versus two. He can't hit the shot. Mox beams him. And Mutineers close out a huge round. I thought Formal was going to be in trouble because when we hopped him for a second, he had a sliver of his dead silence. Well, it's, it's almost like he's, he, maybe you hear that in the position, but maybe. I think it's your teammate. Yeah, that's you true. That's true. Teammate. He had his teammate above him. Or uh, they had a teammate above him. Because I thought he was screwed because I thought he was going to have to run across, but he must have just got there. Big round for the Mutineers. Keep this close. You have a player for Huntsman inside the B site this time around. And one watching outskirts as well. He uses Deddy, works his way up the middle alley. But his brother takes down his teammate, Havoc. It's just, when is Pristini going to go? That's the question. How patient can he be? The timing the goes his way. Yep, and then see, see you later, brother. Formal. See you later, brothers. Pristini wins that one. Arsides gets caught. Forty seconds to go, and still have to work this plant. I think that peaking mid. That's Envoy. That's going to peak up, and Envoy gets the kill. Turns into a three versus three. And now, with Dead Silence pop, he's got a big flank opportunity. They've lost him, and he might get an angle up, making he get there in time. They actually all push directly forward into B, so by the time he gets there, I don't think he's going to have the angle. But they should have a pinch attack as Skump peeks in through the window. Numbers now to Huntsman. The challenge and the pre-fire there is Skump. Might have closed out the round. Mox has to go for the plant with only 10 seconds remaining. But he hops off to take the gun, but he's able to win it, and he's still able to get it down. Shot time. Here he comes, here he comes, he's got close. Snap. Here he comes, he can't get the beat. Mox is able to get away! He gets away, but not far enough as Envoy hunts it down <laughs> and gets the defuse, but Mox almost with a remarkable play. Yeah, it's like you have an MP5 in that situation, you can probably challenge it. He just tries to get out, gets hit by a bullet or two, but almost pulls it off. Almost like he is so close. That bolt right there, I think that's just the. 
I'm kind of screwed at the moment. He tries to get the nade off. Maybe get a lucky stick. I thought he lost it when he didn't plant the first time, but he had just enough time. What a one-on-one -on -one win that was for him, but couldn't close it out. Remember those two guys, former teammates all, all year last year. That's true. That's a good point. We had the brother battle. We have the former teammates there. Now the brightest spot of their careers up until this point was with that Gen G team. Havoc <laughs> lying in wait, but unfortunately for There's him, two. it's a, yeah. a two-man <laughs> hit. But the big thing is he gets one. Yeah, nice trade, and then you see what's going on. This was so fast that they have time to rotate out. There's only one player left at A for Gen for well, not Genji Fool, though. Yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and it's Mox, nearly the hero of the previous round. He's going to have to be a hero here. Two players that can quickly rotate to help him. And they do that. You see how fast that rotation comes in? But Gunless takes Mox off the site. Now Skies has to rally in with Frosty. Skies just deep enough that the grenade doesn't connect. As Arceus continues to look for the angle, and Huntsman get that bomb plant through. Gunless wins another fight in sight, but it's Skies that's getting the trades. Two that's it. will fall everybody down for Huntsman, and another round win for Mutineers. I mean, great shots by Skies, because Arceus was all the way in his base with the sniper, right? I, I mean, I, I was about to, I was trying to see if they had a smoke to deal with Arceus, but he's able to take two down, and a nice retake from Florida. I think you nailed it, that's all Skies. <laughs> Hitting those shots. Not only the long range shots, but then the trade as well onto Gunless. And they're keeping it within a round. Christini has dead silence to work with. Well, you know when you can't <laughs> work with dead silence? Just that's a, yeah. that's when you're dead, Joe. Yeah, just a quick peek right from Formal, right? He just peeks the door. And Formal is still stuck in that corner. They don't know, but now they do. As he closes the door, they try to find him. But he gets away. He finds his second. Finally, a trade is there for Florida. It's a huge opening from Formal, though. To put them in a 4v3. That is one thing. I mean, for London, it just felt like a hey, time and time again. But maybe with the time change, change teams are really trying to execute as much as possible towards this B site. Mox should be dead sooner than later. The closer he works up towards B, there are two tucked away all in the back cliff. I just don't think he's expecting multiple players there. He's not. Envoy's able to get the kill. Nice positioning from Huntsman. Keep the edge, but just for a second. Now a 2v2. 15 seconds to go, though. Havoc's got to work this plan. He's wrapped it back towards A, and it's open, unless it's, an invoid nade comes, comes over the top. Unless comes over. Skies, though, they're hunting him, right? So he, he's just no trying to stay time. alive. <laughs> he's trying to stay alive. He knows he's the main priority. He finds another one on Dude, a gunless. His M4 at range is looking very clean. But invoid, can he now clutch the 1v2? Right behind Skies, the snap is on point. 1v1 versus Havoc. He immediately saw what Havoc does. He, he just sprints the other way. Who's played more 1v1 games uh, during his stream than Havoc? He's, <laughs> he's been There's more than a few. Oh. Smoke in, but it's Havoc that hits the shots. There's the 1v1 clutch. And Mutineers tie it up 1-1. You know, it's one of those, a 3-3. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I don't, I don't know if it was covering it, but, like, you, you, you want it to disperse a little bit, get... Get him freaking out. You can sort of finesse the smoke. Or maybe it's a little bit short, you're saying? Like yeah. The smoke might have been. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he hits a shot, but sees him in the smoke, can't finish it. He panics or <laughs> tries to make it. I mean, there's life. still 20 seconds left, right? So he's oh. like, uh-oh. Right up the gut again from Chicago. with two. Havoc a chance yeah, maybe third. for a third. Havoc dominate in the mid-map. Finally, they named him out, but it's a little bit too late. It's the multi-kill through for Havoc in early 4v2. Yeah, there's already pressure here as well inside of their house. One player chasing him. That's an Christini. 
able to finish that. Just gets the big toe, and there we go. A clean round from Florida. Starts with Havoc. Similar to what we saw with, with Formal last round, right? Where there's so much B pressure. Defensive team just trying to find a pick in middle, and well, Havoc finds three. Is that three in a row now for Mutineers to take the lead? Havoc has been so huge, the 1v1 clutch, the three kills at mid. Now out to nine and six. Get me right back to mid. Yeah, right, right back to B. I imagine like both teams are probably, all right, maybe this time they'll go away. But look at the pressure from Chicago. They, they just go through A, they go through A. And they're calling this. RCS, he can to find one that's a tough angle but i like that adjustment from chicago now it's on and boy to see what he can do in the site so i'm gonna find the first blood now just trying to stay up was it bomb carrier though he's still alive but numbers dwindling now for mutineers they had numbers too because gunless was pushed all the way up the flank like on the a side so you had in a sense a 5v4 at least closer to the site they just didn't win any of the fights until that point. Frosty with a nice kill, tagged from behind, trying to stay up as he bobs and weaves. Can he take another down with him? Ring around the rosy we go as Arcees tries to finesse, and Frosty right back he's to the just, side. Yeah, he's just been sprinting back and forth. Oh, Daddy allows you to do that. <laughs> nice shots from Mox. Just time, time they're gonna have to try to plant this bomb. Oh, they brought it from a 3v5 to a 3 versus 3. Bombs down, bombs down, they know it too. I just don't think they have time to get there. Yeah, they, they take so long inside the middle of the map. Gunless, he has A on lock. So and boy, he's got B on lock, and, and that's it. Is that a good example of where the that 30 time, less yeah. seconds can hurt you? Yeah, that time difference, that's where it comes in. We talked about which map would it probably have the biggest impact on. It's absolutely our claw peak. All square again at 4-4. We'll take a look at the map, see the split. Heavy pressure at A from Mutineers. They've got four players there. I think RC is just going to smoke it and back up. Everyone's going to fly into B. There's one guy here. What can he do? Bristini. Two huge ones. That's all he has to do. I mean, you're hoping for one. The fact that he gets gifted a second is great. And you see how fast forward is going towards the backside, but Envoy's up top and he's able to play his life, finessing around the site. Now Arsides takes down Havoc in those two kills from Prasini. I thought he was just going to try and get it down, but he's still so worried about the presence from Mutineers. Now getting the plant in for Huntsman. 3v2. A formal cross. All disguised now. He's been hitting his shots. He's gonna have to hit a lot if he's gonna get this clutch. 30 seconds to go. RC's got the box and RC's got the shots. Fifth round went in from Huntsman. Christine does everything he can. He's the only player inside the B site. Gets all you could ask for. Two kills right off the rip. And I don't know. I, I don't know if the play call is just because they both have Deddy. They try to go through the back door, but Envoy's just ready for it. The trade's not there. He's able to play his life. The trade, the trade's there. It's a lot different story. So it's a different story, yeah. Huntsman looking to close it out. Take a 2-0 edge. Getting closer. Just setting up for the data. I think everybody has expected. Everybody has wanted a matchup against the home series Atlanta Phase Squad. Gunless so strong from this position at the mound. All is the utility exhausted now, though. How do Mutineers get him out of this spot? And for Formal's going on a wide flank, right? So he's just giving his team all the information. They can have one player watch mid. The rest of them focus on this site. RC's on bomb, just trying to stay alive. Gives that call out to Gunless. The duo locking it down here. He's able to find his second of the round. And you got to love that reposition. And, and they're just waiting for Formal, too. Like, Formal is a ready to pounce on the flank. He's going to find Skies, and it is all up to Mox. Three for Gunless in the round. Mox able to win one one-on-one, -on -one, but he's last alive, and the only hopes for the Mutineers lie with him. 
simply too tall in order. Huntsman go up 2-0. And again, if you're a Chicago fan, you just have to be happy with how great their search and destroy has been. I mean, from London to here, how much they've improved. It's these big games, right? It used to be their weakness, you know, those formal scump teams. What we talked about, if you were going to beat them, it had to be, you know, through two searches. Nowadays, it's just not. But taking a look, double digits from both formal and gunless. On the other side, Mox had a great game. Same with Havoc, but just a little short. They kept it so close throughout it, but just too strong from Huntsman. Down the stretch, Gunless with the big final round with three kills. Envoy with that nasty nade over the top to win a round. It was unbelievable, but after this semifinal, before the final, we have the hype battles going down. Again, we've had phase members fighting throughout the course of the weekend to get down to your final two on two. They're going to go up against each other in gunfight, and that's going to lead right into the final. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Rule your day with the number one brand in prepaid. One of his top guns, Alec Arcides Sanderson, is taking advantage of a little downtime. Catching up with former teammate and twin brother, Preston. I'm on the toilet, bro. You're on the toilet? 
sitting on the toilet. <laughs> Mother toilet. <laughs> you gotta get a grip. What? You called me? <laughs> I gotta finish up, bro. Call me back after. I'll think about it. Okay, my bad. Alright, bro. Alright, peace. Since the beginning of their careers, Alec and Preston have always fought side by side. That is, until now. While Alec signed with the Huntsman, Preston joined the Florida Mutineers. This is the first time me and my brother have not been on a professional team together. I've never been very good in uncomfortable situations, but he always made me more comfortable because it's someone I knew I grew up with. Like, I've always had fun with him. It's, uh, it's very different. I'm killing you, and if I win, I'm making it personal. I'm coming over and screaming in your face. <laughs> All right, noted. I'm going to do the same thing, then. Wait, bring mom to this. I want to say hi. Mom! Like, do you like us being on separate teams now, better or worse? She doesn't like it. <laughs> She's not a fan. You're breaking mom's heart. I know. He abandoned me. Having a twin brother, especially the one that plays Call of Duty with me, it's so cool because he's always made life easier. I've probably made his life easier. It's just someone you could always get along with. Making a jersey that's half and half. Our team. If I have a problem, I'm gonna tell him before anybody else because he knows more about me than pretty much anybody on this planet. Mom, I love you, Preston. You still suck. Peace. It's wild, Joe, because uh, we've touched on the fact that sometimes teams have stuck together too long due to friendships and, you know, not want to leave their boys behind. But this is brothers, man. It, it had to be so difficult to make this type of decision. And it's, it's it's incredible to see them on the main stage playing against each other. But I can't even imagine for their mom how difficult yeah, that is. Tennis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, obviously the best thing, though, you know, if you want to put a bow on it, they won a world championship together last year. I, I don't think... You could ask for for anything better to, to bring two together. There's but literally nothing better. Yeah, no, there's, there's nothing better for these two. But, yeah, I mean, it's uh, obviously with the CDL, different signings. They had to go separate ways, but I'm sure they're they're both very happy right now. Well, right now, Huntsman, though, up 2-0. And I do want to take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play before we get to the map three domination. And I believe... It's the Kobe over the top. It's the nade from Envoy to get them off a bomb. Stop the plant on it. Of course, it's Pristini on the receiving end of it. But what a nade it was to close out that round and give him a 2-0 edge. Yeah, I mean, there's this round that sticks out. There, there's the one as well where Pristini, he peeks out the door and finds those first two kills. I mean, it, it's a 6-4 game. One or two rounds go differently for Florida. This could be a map two win for them. But it's those little decisions. It's those, it's those small plays. And... That's one of them. Now, we go to Petro, and we've seen how good Huntsman have been here. Yes, Envoy sir. making the plays around the Caps, the boys stepping it up. I mean, their wins, they're averaging, like, it, it feels like by 100, right? Yeah, I mean, both teams the past three games are 3-0. Are oh. okay. But Chicago, they have a 105-point win, they have a 37-point win, and they have a 90-point win. Florida, yes, they've won, but it has been different. It's a 19-point win versus London. It's a one-point win last night versus Optic, and then today, a five-point win. So I, I don't even know if those add up to, to equal one of Chicago's <laughs> wins on this map. But always the key player that we'd love to talk about is Envoy. Just the, the smart decisions, the way he finesses, especially around this C-Flag. Well, it feels like if Mutineers are going to win this, it's going to be a nail-biter. <laughs> That's how they're going to get it done. Can they keep it scrappy? Can they close it out in the late moments of the game? Pushing through B immediately is in, boys. There's multiple players inside a restaurant he's got to worry about, but he's just going to wrap out and hit tracks as Gunless and Formal pick up kills on the outside. Promo takes a second one with him, and that might be the opening to get the cap. It's just Envoy having to dodge nades. Find the smoke. Five are going to fall. That is a perfect opening from Huntsman, just picking apart the Mutineers and getting the two cap early. Yeah, he's dodging nades on that B flag. He's also helping Formal on the C Street. Right, we, we've seen this all weekend long. This is the down we, we've watched a lot. You know the main focus from both teams is going to be on that C flag. You're going to have a, a player like Formal just sitting all the way back. Well, Huntsman find themselves one map away from back-to-back -back grand finals if they can close it out here. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listen-in with the Chicago Huntsman. Someone fill in tracks, fill in tracks. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. 
Dom, 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 one shot. Dom, absolute. Try to get tracked. Look up, 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 look he got Guys, me, listen, he jumped out, he jumped out. See you guys, so I'm gonna, I haven't jumped out of the other slay. Push up gate, push up gate, push up gate. Get down, get down. Push up, 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 yeah, I knew one another one. Should be I'm looking at tracks. Yeah, there's two on A, guys. One shot, one shot, one river. Absolute dump. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get left. Trying to get left right now. I don't see anything arch. Spawn. Circling up, circling up. I spawned arch. Spawned arch. One on B, on B, one bullet B. On B, 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 on Laying back right. Back right, back right, back right. Back right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, push, 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 I don't see anything corners. Trying to get that pressure on. Work side together. I want to see him. I'm going to frosty. Watch out, see him. Frosty. Watch out, see him. Frosty. Watch out, see him. Let's 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 all right, back into where you go, and Joe, we were kind of talking back and forth about, I, I thought the comps were great. I mean, between the small talk and just to the point comps, it's great. Yeah, I mean, you love to hear in those listen-ins, right? You, you spawn up, where did I spawn, right? That, that gives your team a, a lot of information where your opponents could be on the map. But during that listen-in, as it started, it was great for Huntsman. It was a CV hold with an A neutral. You thought they were going to really run the score up the way they have been. Since then, it's been a, an A-B hold by Florida. They've gotten this lead down to three. Now pressure here at C. A big one-on-one. -on -one. Can Havoc win it against Formal? Got the help of his teammate, and they're going to flip this map on its head. What do you think went wrong when Mutinies were able to finally take B? When they finally got that breakthrough, was it misposition from Huntsman, or what happened? I mean, they just can't all go down sort of at the same time, right? You do not want two to three go down. The trophy was there from Florida. Well, Formal, he's up top. He doesn't have the angle for it. Exactly. Like, it felt like he had to fly out to mid, which you don't want to do. Like, he's in that power spot top. It just seems like he almost felt like someone should have that cross from Riverside or from tracks and just never was able to get it. But Mutineers, they go down big, they rally back, and they keep it tight. What more do you expect from them on this map as a blade? We'll, we'll see what happens, because while you do have B, if you're a Florida, that could go away, because you have an AC setup right now from Chicago. You would love a potential three cap. But they're gonna hang on to B. Also get some pressure towards that C side. Lead back to Huntsman. If only minimally. Despite what happens these 30 seconds, I mean we are gonna head into the second half very tight. Two cap if only for an instant from you here is the Chicago rallies into the mid map. Looking for an opening, I believe it's Pristini towards A, but he's going to get caught. And I, I kind of like what we saw from Florida, because I, I don't think a lot of teams are too comfortable just holding AB, right? A lot of the times when this map gets, as we call it, controlled chaos, or, you know, spawns get a little wonky, it's because teams are really just trying to push C. Like, they feel like if they have C, everything's good to go, and when that happens, you have the foot spawns at A, you spawn down low. Yeah. That's when things get weird. We typically don't see sort of an A, B, let's just sort of settle down, not put pressure on their home flag, and that got them back into the game. What was the deficit at its biggest for Florida? It's around like 17, 18 points. Well, they brought it within five. Five minutes separate Huntsman from another final, and Mutineers yeah, we touched trying on to stay team. alive. I mean, Envoy, 16 and 10, leading the way for his team. Reason. This this map, this game mode just works for him. Hard point too. It's like just this map. Like he just feels comfortable. And right away, you can see what he wants to do. He finds the first one. His teammates take a couple of down. It goes right back to C. But Mox wins the gunfight. Nice shots there from our cities to apply pressure now to Hazmat. They got to wrap back to A, though, as one is there. That'll get cleaned up. 
Not a lot of points coming in for anybody right now. Yeah, it's just one of those things where we're right off the break because Huntsman put so much pressure towards C. Right, that's when that sort of player spawns out towards A, and then there's going to be a neutral, and both teams are sort of at a standstill. In case you can't get B. Havoc trying to get pushed up. Put some pressure Riverside. Maybe neutral this flag, and he is trying to neutral A. I think it's top blue. He spotted him. So one on one. Gets the neutral off at least. Oh, I thought he was going to win it for a second. The movement was on point, but Arcity's able to shut it down. Tie game, 93-93. No one with a foothold at B, at least early in this second half. 90 seconds already off the clock. Now a chance for Huntsman. They've got multiple here. There's one at line on the opposite side. It's Havoc that goes huge. Skies with the help over the top and what looked like maybe a Huntsman cap. I think going to turn into B control now for Mutineers. There it is. They'll secure B. There's no cap in for Huntsman. They're just going to try to get A in through now. A chance for some big separation for the Mutineers. Maybe to push away this game and get us to a map four with Frosty. Doing them dirty like that. Man, he's just playing around the neutral. It's going to be a lot of points for Florida right now. Not trying to get to three cap. His teammates go down around him. Havoc was trying to help him up. Out, but that five-point deficit deleted. Now a 12-point lead. They still have a two cap as well. It was tied 93-93 a moment ago. Yeah, just... but this is just like the first, I don't know, Petro, where you, know, you haven't had a lot of those crazy plays really happen for Chicago towards C. I mean, Florida have done a really good job of just containing the map. It just feels like they're slowing things down a bit. It's been a lot easier just to follow on the main map through this. It's been a you whole know, lot more You know, I can explain control. this one. Yeah. <laughs> Scump can't quite dip away. Two and a half to go, and Huntsmen are going to need to get some semblance of a two cap soon if they're going to bring this back. A Mox trying to disrupt and maybe play for the neutral through pool hall. It's formal back there looking to deal with him. But now an opening at B, perhaps for Huntsman. They need to clear them out of second story as Pristini just having his way with them. Nice shots from Havoc at range with that MP5. Uh, they're just playing like three back towards Hasman. I mean, at this point, 25 points. Now you're Chicago, you need a two cap. You need a two cap minimum. You need a two and a neutral. You're gonna have to start getting aggressive. Player spawn towards that A side. That was frosty. Slow things down. And I just think because Chicago has to do so much, you're just seeing staggered pushes. They're not waiting for each other. Everybody's trying to make the hero play. Yeah, but it's a great job for Mutineers, too, just yeah. making sure nobody gets into has been. No one's exactly. been able to make some yeah. sort of individual play. Like they've kind of cut it off with that 50 yard line and just capped Huntsman from really applying pressure it, it to see. at this point now where they're just going. They're just going to try to neutral flies to make this mathematically impossible. And we're close from that. Has to be it from Chicago. They have to try to win on all three fronts, and I don't think they're able to do so at all. Both teams 3-0 and on this map and mode coming into it, but Mutineers looking to reign supreme. And this was an elimination map for them. Remember, it's single elimination in the bracket. All we have after this is the high battles in the grand final, and Mutineers desperately trying to get into that grand final. Pristini, you heard him in the video. He wants to get up in Alex's face after the W. So one, it's one map closer. Yeah, it's one of the more controlled maps on Petro Dom that I, I've seen from Florida. It, it really is. Just well, I, seems they're setting the standard. You can see it on the scoreboard just with the objective. You don't see anything in double digits, any wild numbers. We've had a map here. We cast it. It was like 40 neutral doing something wild, and that was before you could stack too. Yeah. Like we're just talking back to London. So I think you nail it there with how much more controlled it was, and they control the scoreboard. This ends up being a blowout, a game that was 93 to 93 at one point. From that moment forward, it is all Mutineers. And as the final seconds tick away, they get us to a map four, they extend this semifinal, and they try to push into a grand final. Mutineers, stay alive. All right, and then we get ourselves to another hard point, I mean, that first one, right? Two-point game. Florida was in it the entire time. What was it, 250, 241? Something from that ballpark. It, it, it's a tight one, and I, I think if you're if you're Chicago, you're sort of expecting to get back to the final. Like, you're coming off the win. Yeah, I if think you're there Florida, was, uh... there's some doubters, and you're sick of probably hearing about Chicago this, Atlanta this, Chicago that. You want to show you can hang, and they're doing that there with the map three win.
All right, so we're headed to, to Hackney yeah, next. So we'll have to obviously see who spawns on that coalition side. It's something we always talk about. Well, it's huge. I mean, it's huge. It usually leads to about an 80-point advantage. If you're spawning on the right side of the minimap when you go to Hackney, it's why we don't see it played a ton, maybe as some of the other maps in the hard point rotation. But let's now check out the final stats. No, nothing crazy, right? I, I mean, nothing too crazy. Obviously, Envoy had about 50 engagements. Goes 26 and 24. But, uh, but on both sides, I, I just think because it felt like the game was slowed down you no, know, quite a bit, you didn't have too much on either side. Pristini, a big game from him, 25 and 20. Just pretty equal all around. The Grubhub delivery of the day. Get $10 off your first order of $15 or more. Use code ATLANTA. Terms and conditions apply. I love a good Grubhub order. I love food. I just so. like to eat. We had, we had tacos for lunch. It was just spectacular. Uh, we just got an email about dinner, so <laughs> I'm already looking forward to that as well. well. What was it, by the way? Did it say what it was for dinner? I'll take you a look. Yes, please you do. You want me to tell you the do. menu? Uh, I would love that. Can you read that out for me? But that is Grubhub restaurants you love delivered. You get $10 off your first order of 15 or more. Use code CDL Atlanta. And another thing we love, the brother duo. The rivalry created instantly when these two players separated. We'll take a look at how we've got here thus far, what the statistics look like for both teams. And uh, I guess not too shocked when you think about the dud from Pristini map one, but wow, did he step it up in map three to keep them well, alive in the Well, also just the rolls, right? I mean, obviously it's so difficult to run MP5 on, on Azir Cave, where Arsene is, he runs the M4. He uh, had a much better game, but the rest of the way, it's Pristini and Search and Destroy. It was Pristini right there for Florida in that domination, having a great game from him. And Pristini tweeted last night, I think it was like, he really feels like he is one of the best players in this game. He thinks he has that potential to be in the combos, one of the top players in the game. Now is when you prove that. Now is when you step it up. Because when you look at the stage and you look at the members of each team, you see Titans on one side. When you talk about the Huntsman, all the talent there, all the championships, all the MVPs that we've seen from that side. It is very much a David versus Goliath. It absolutely is. But here we go. Map four, Hackney Yard loaded on in. So Florida is going to be starting on the preferred side. We'll have to take a look at what they can do in these first two hills. And yeah, now you're, you're know what down, you say. You're yep. down one, two. They have to have a Pump solid lead. They have to have a solid lead after tire shop. After two hard points, mutineers need to be in control. They can't get broken. That right side of the map for the next two minutes is their home. They have to protect it at all costs if they're going to take this map four and get us to a fifth final map. I love this from Chicago. They just five hit the first hill. They don't send any pressure towards the top side of the map. It's what we always talk about. If you're not going to pick, if you're going to pick Hackney, you have to get a lot, a lot of points on this first hill. And they put all their resources into it, already 10 on the board. They're not worried about that tire shop just quite yet. They want those early points. Florida, it is desperation time. You need this map win. You are fighting for your tournament lives. Let's go to an Astro Gaming Listen in with the Florida Mutineers. I'll kill him. Okay. He's double T. Double T on me, guys. Oh, no, double T on me, guys. Yo, stay alive. Three, three, oh, three, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two next to here. One double T, double T, guys. Yep, he's front of the door. Back up, White Chaw. You're going to be one heavy. You're one heavy. I'm looking at the top of the top. Yo, make sure you hold, hold, hold. Yeah, make sure you hold right. We got right. You're pressed. I'm going to be right. Back up, back up, back up. Another one, another one. Yo, right, right, right. Yo, can we kill him? I think there's two people on him. Hill one shot. Hill one shot. I got time. I got time. I got play my life. Three people. Three people. Three people. Oh, yo, yeah, it's right, right, right. Our crates, our crates. Alex. Alex, our crates. Watch out. Where's my car? Where's my car? It's Mini. He's our car. Car, car, car. Yo, he's our front. Front, front, dead. I said another one. Another one. He's going bottom, bottom, hill. Bottom hill. Yeah, scap, scap, going mid. Mid, mid, mid. All of them. All of them. Good job. Play my life. They're going to be too pushing out. Keep pushing out. I got one. I have scap, guys. Hold my door. Two on door. Two on door. I needed it. I'm looking at our door. Smoke it, smoke it, smoke it, smoke it, smoke it. Nice, good shit. They smoked it, they're gonna be tired, guys, heavy. Yeah, yeah watch off, watch off. Yeah, watch your low door, watch your low door. Heady, on her, heady. Hop car, hop car, watch that, two there, two there. Two, 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 I got one, I got one. Go bottom door, bottom door. Yeah, hill, somebody's Bottom door, hill. Bottom door, hill. He's here, he's here. Car, 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 car. He's here, four more low. Go, let's go. Bottom garage, bottom garage. Bottom garage, bottom garage. Make sure we get this time. 
Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out. Dude, listen, already P1. We gotta cut this guy off. Yeah, I'm okay. cutting, I'm cutting. I'm trying to. Just spawn here, just go. Yep. Just, okay. yeah, just P1. He's in hill, he's in hill. I'm going mid to new. Get that time. They're gonna be P1, guys. Green crate, gun lay instead. Nice, they're gonna be P1 heavy. Yo, push up, push, 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 Brad. Push. I'm watching him. Chance, bottom green. 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 Bottom they spawned out behind us. Middle, 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 I mean, it was those last 25 seconds that Chicago able to break in a tire shot, but it, even the 39 just off the break. Uh, we talked about it as soon as the game started, Chicago, they put a lot of resources and it paid off. But you know, we, we talked about Chicago, listen, he, even right there, I think he especially heard Moss, the leadership that he, he brings, just sort of commanding the troops, making sure they're all on the same page. But yeah, I think through two, you, you would love to have it at least the lead, and instead it's Chicago with that lead. Usually, the number we throw around is like 60 to 80 point advantage. It's a tie game after two. So the edge to Huntsman, without question. And now you start to push open a lead of your own if you're Huntsman. But we'll head into green, already set up. You've got Formal there, Gunless as well. Nice picks, though, by Frosty. I think he actually gets both from that half wall, the brick wall in the back. As his picks come in, was that enough to get his teammates in? It absolutely was. What a moment from Frosty and the Mutineers to disrupt the early setup from Huntsman. Bit of brilliance as now Skies gets it done from bottom green. I mean, Frosty had a great map one as well with that MP5. We talked about Envoy, his performance on Cave. Frosty was a, a unit for the Florida Mutineers, and this is great time for Florida. You can see what Chicago is trying to do the bottom side. They're trying to flip spawns, and it looks like they have. As we will rotate to Docs here in 25 seconds, Pristini. He's got the whole team to deal with, and his brother's gonna take him down. But it's a great break and a great bit of time for Mutineers inside green. But now one of the, probably the second hardest break on this map. First tire shops, now docks. Not easy to surge through. A Pristini's like, screw it, I'm coming in but from up top. He got three down, I think he was just trying to hope, hopefully he finds an opening. Not able to do so. You see the deep spawns. You see middle of the map. This wall controlled by Gunless. You have top L controlled by Formal. And you have him spawning where you want him, all the way back towards tire shop side. That's all you want, right? Just stagger the pushes, even if you find one kill. We'll slow things down. Chicago, they're going to spawn much closer than Florida. Here comes the pressure, though. Three go down. Have it just right outside the door. There's an opening. You win the top side, so now you get the parallel spot. Now you can at least try to flood a bit easier, but Hidden Boy, Gunless, Arcities, close it down for now as every point of this hard point has gone the way of Huntsman. They'll end up spawning out deep, though. Who spawns out? That's going to be Hidden Boy. That's what so he the final to do. 20 seconds go over to Mutineers. They'll get the flip, though. They'll get tire side control. And yes, you'll have a deficit here. You're going to be down 30 or so points. But now is where you have a chance to really rally. You can chain together these next two hard points if you're Huntsman. Yeah, again, who is it for the Huntsman to make the heads up play to realize the situation they're in? It's Envoy. Flips the side of the map that they want. Talked about it for Florida. What can Chicago do? A 20 point lead. Take a look at the scoreboard. Yeah, let's think about that. Just mental note 20 points the difference. Where do we look after Tire Shop? Ah, well, I don't know, because four. Are gonna okay, go well, down and Florida <laughs> done it. They flipped. The map like they wanted to, beautifully done well, that by was the Florida Mutineers. That was just easy. What a flip from Mutineers. Now to scratch everything Joe and I said for the last 30 seconds because it's just flipped on its head completely by Florida. Now they can really blow this game wide open. 25 seconds remaining at first. But it's the arrows on the right side. That are the key to victory now. Gunless doing what he can to make an opening, and he might have done enough. No, what am I saying? You need five down clean if you're gonna break tire shop. Yeah, you would have had to kill three more, probably five <laughs> more, five, five more after that. And then, then a maybe, I don't know. <laughs> There's still a question yeah, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> they got the setup they want, 154, 154. Mutineers can get a ton of time here as Havoc. I think it was six in a row from him before he fell. This is the next big push from the Huntsman. Can they stagger it? They, they did it once. Can they do it again? I mean, can they, can they find those final 20, 25 seconds? 
They're able to get three dead. That'll allow them to get to those walls, some of those positions and opportunity. But you look at the kill feed, it's three for Florida. Havoc trying to find the second, and he does. So they weren't able to do it on the first rotation. This time, though, at Tire Shop, it is all Florida Mutineers. Now, about to be a 40-point lead. It's going to go up to a, about a 50. That was a hold and a half. But what it was was the flip, right? Right is the first hard point. And our next rotation, Pops, they get a flip with a perfect five down. Brilliant stuff from Mutineers. And that score will be the exact opposite, more than likely, if that flip doesn't come. Now, can they close out the game behind it? Huntsman inside the smoke stack. It's formal. Trying to line up what he can mid with the M4. It's a grenade that'll get it done. And then the shots connect as well. Over to Skunk towards mid map. They haven't even got formal out of it. They have not even got formal out of it. Christine, he's trying to go on a flight, but he has the whole team to deal with. Yeah. He's able to find one. I like this. Don't repeat. Make them guess. He's able to find the second. Oh, not able to take down the third, but his teammate will. Yeah, who cares? As long as it's your teammate, Pristini and Skies, the melt machines, lock it down and get into Smokestack. Now the battle for green is up. Skies with his power position at the half ball. This is where Frosty made the play last time that was able to get them in. Is Skies now on a five streak? With five seconds before the rotation. He hit the spawns as well, and he, he recognizes the situation. Frosty, he's going to get inside the hill, help his teammates out. Prasini with some nice shots. Just 15 more seconds needed for Formal to take us to a game five. Both semifinals might be going the distance. <laughs> it's looking that way. Mutineers can get it done here. Get us look, to the map five. Look at for the entire team. And all of them going off. They're all just dropping bombs to send this to a fifth map. What Woo. a game from Florida. Well, we had two game fives in the semifinal in London. It is a repeat here. And I know everybody's been talking about FaZe versus the Huntsman. Oh, they're not getting there easy not if they're getting, getting there, there at all. Yeah, not getting there easy. It's just, it's that one moment. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's just great because we spent, what, a good 15 to 20 seconds highlighting how this was going to be the swing for Huntsman, how they had the proper setup. And then what a break it was from the Mutineers. Unreal. As we now take a look at the stats, Joe, what's popping for you? Everybody positive on the side of Florida. Pristini with 54 engagements. You talk about the talent in the slaying power that the Huntsmen have, but they just got beat to hell on that Hackney Yard. Oh, uh, well, Joe, we had a reverse sweep in our last series. Huntsman go up 2-0. Now at risk is Mutineers getting it done. They keep on rocking. Map 5 up next.
Hello and welcome back to a ridiculous championship Sunday here at the Atlanta Phase Home Series. A refresher on how the bracket has gone. Everyone thought it was going to be FaZe versus Huntsman to close it out, but Rocker made it tough on FaZe. Mutineers now doing the same thing to the Huntsman. Now, Joe, you were actually talking about the fact it mimics the semifinal we saw from London in two best of fives. I didn't yeah. think about the fact every game's been a five-game series. Today? Every single one. That's it. Today's been ludicrous. It's yeah, just it's, been all game fives. Insanity. I, I mean, I think it's a few things, right? You have a, few, a couple of rematches from the groups, but then, you know, when you get to the semifinals, you have some of the the best teams in the world squaring off. They obviously all have their, their strengths and their weaknesses, and both of these teams are testing it. Just five game series. What, what more can you ask for? It, what's insane is we had eight best of fives yesterday. We have five today. Today might end up being longer than yesterday just because the insanity of these series. But now, Joe, all the focus on this fifth and final map. And one of the things that he touched on the desk, the key to victory for Huntsman is not relying on Scump and these big game fives where he's had to go huge. But do you think it is on him? Does he need to be massive for them to take this final no, map? I, I think you saw both formal and gunless in, in game two, both drop 10 kills. But I mean, we talk about a map like Gunrunner. You you talk about the, the fights for mid control. You rely on your SMG players. So I think a little bit more, you're looking for some out of Scump and Envoy. But it's going to be scary because we know on the other side of the stage, you have guys like Havoc, guys like Pristini. We both can just put that mid-map pressure on you. And, and I think after that game four, you, you're feeling confident. Feeling good. Gunrunner. It all comes down to this for a spot in the grand final here in Atlanta. Phase. And the tiny tears just lying in wait as they hold home court and look for their first championship of the year. But these two squads, the chance to kill that dream story. Who can take this game five? Huntsman, Mutineers, Pristini versus Arsides, the battle of the brothers, and it all goes down to this fifth and final map. Yeah, well, we touch on a lot, obviously, I mean, map control, but really uh, about that B bomb site when you talk about just the retake scenarios that go on there who's able to come out on top who can win those offenses right away you see how aggressive Florida is getting just right up the middle of the map you have Pristini you have Havoc Pristini going in for the first blood just, but it goes to his brother said, brother I'm coming I'm coming but Arceus gets the final lap but the trade does come through quick 4v4 Gump tries to pick up the slack, just barely able to stay alive behind those pipes and get back. Yeah, and I, I think inside. because Gump doesn't go down, Envo Envoy's able to pick up Havoc, who is putting those shots in him. Still have Frosty in a solid position. Maybe he can make the play for F Florida. Huntsman just taking their time. Right, because it, it's just so difficult to defend this B bomb side. You have to either push up towards that rock or sort of play around a 50-50 where you have to try to guess when they're planning. Yeah, towards B. It just yeah. feels like it's like luck half the time. Like, what timing do you get? And, and behind this timing, because they've taken so long, the two players of crates have just backed all the way up. I mean, look at the position of Mox right now. He's not even close to this bomb site. Bomb not going down yet, and that's actually going to give them time to work their way through. But this is what I was talking about, right? I mean, they have to try to find the bomb planner, and that's going to bait him through. Formal, he's going to get that. On the skies, it all comes down to Mox. A clean round for Chicago. Oh, they play at the time and never even need to get the bomb planted, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just locate the kills. Were you surprised by how deep Mutineers backed it up? Yeah, I mean, obviously in the three versus four, you, you almost have to take a risk, right? They just try to stack a site. You know, they're thinking maybe Chicago rotates it. But I, I think it just comes down to that first blood, right? In a big first round out of Envoy. Three kills already. Danny just spotting for information. It was pretty aggressive from Huntsman towards B for a moment, but this all the way pushed up. That's Envoy just well, Pristini, he found an opening. Pristini found an opening. He smoked himself out. If we can hop on board with Pristini, finds the first blood. He gets through and gets the kill, but aggressive on the other end of things at the site was Envoy, who puts it in a 4v4. But what a play from Pristini to get right up the gut. Yeah, I mean, he's playing around that and just smokes himself out, runs through the smoke. And you see his positioning towards those lower bathrooms. 
Bomb goes down. Now four versus four. Well, maybe a three, beyond, three on three. And I just don't know. Proceed. He's about to go on the flank here as well. Dead silence pop. And they're not ready for it. He can't quite finish the kill. That nade's going to back himself up as he didn't get quite the angle he wanted. Now he goes to repeat. Gets the timing. Arceus will drop. Can't get the resnap onto Gunless. All on Frosty. Last alive to make the play in a one versus two. There's only 20 seconds on the clock. He can still make this play. That's doable. It's, he's going to have to get one kill. Oh, the smoke. Yeah, nice smoke to hang on to. Gunless going for the defuse. Formal watching over him, but the kill! The kill comes in. He plays the time, and Frosty has clutched it for Florida. I thought the smoke was just enough to force him out of the spot where he had cover. But it ends up almost helping him, right? He can get the angle towards the bomb. But my well, first it, thought is that yeah. smoke, that smoke screws him. But it gave him the angle. It, it allowed a, him to cross. It's where the bomb was planted too, right? They, they can't stretch it behind the site. He's all the way out in the open. So as soon as he gets through, it's just a couple of shots. And Formal not there to get on the bomb. A nice clutch from Frosty. Ties this up. Boy, right up the middle of the uh -oh, bathroom. Oh, that nade, that nade, oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the second bad yeah. nade. Just put the nades away. Look at that stack around bathrooms right now for Huntsman. They've got three players there, but Sky still has this high ground. Can he catch the bomb planner? He's still got Deddy Pop for a second. I thought he was gonna peek it behind the Deddy. But he should be able to catch the kill. Should be able to get the kill as Gunless tries to back it up. Nice patience by Skies. Yeah, but it's the bathroom stack from the Huntsman. I mean, is it what a urinal for each right now? <laughs> <laughs> Numbers go the way of Chicago is Scump and RCs. They get three on the board, all down to Havoc. Scump's got the angle. Yeah, they're just they're, they're all just back to back in there. Hey, guys, all, let's, let's get in the showers. It works out. Worked out. Yeah, building Team Kim. Yeah. <laughs> but what? One offensive round, you get three from Envoy. That one, you get three from Scum. But really, the, the story of, of Gunrunner typically is, is who can win that defense? Who can separate themselves? Christini, peekaboo in the vent, but it's Envoy again with the first blood. Right up mid he goes. He's just sprinting to bathrooms or green, depending on the spawn. Christini answers back, but still going to be a deficit for the Mutineers. How can they bring this back? Watch Christini. He's going to try to put pressure towards the A side again, try to get behind Chicago. It's close to dead silence, too. Very close. Yeah, and I think Chicago, or Skump was watching the cross, but... Did they spot him? I, it looks like they may have spotted Persini. It looks like they, you can see all the arrows sort of back their way on up. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely spotted with the way they're playing. But, this, but just because of the distraction, you had Gunless, who was almost out on his own towards the B side. Oh, look, so at all, they, look at all the white arrows. They all turn for him. Well, Dead Silence won't help you there. Yeah, no, I see your feet. <laughs> yeah. It's his uh, yeah, shins and ankles just decimated by the M4 bullets of Formal. 25 seconds to go. The plant is going to be in there. How do they play this behind it? Frosty wants to get aggressive. He gets up top. I think he had dead silence top. Formal snaps around the edge. Can't take it. The trade there, but Mox is still up now in a one versus one against our cities. 35 seconds to go. Mox just gets away. He spotted the push. All the pressure on our cities to be aggressive here. Mox just has to play the time. He knows it as well, but he has to be worried about the defuse. He's going to peek it from middle. Just gonna spot him, he gets away again. He's just gonna stick it. He's just gonna stick it, Mox has got a peek. Mox has got a peek and the timing is there. That's a big 2v3 from Frosty and Mox. Yeah, I, I mean, it just felt like the push was just a, a little off from Chicago. It felt like Formal went a little too quick with his teammates behind him. Frosty's up top and obviously the trade comes in, but. Good internal clock there from Mox though to get the peak just in time to get him off it. Some of these rounds, man. <laughs> 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 
mayhem. All across the map is the, the nades flying on through. Envoy, who we've seen fly more often than not, playing a little bit slower this round. Yeah, Chicago have done this a few times on defense, right? You know that, or on offense, you know the defensive team is trying to get aggressive, and sometimes they, they get a little too aggressive, giving you a free pick. A lot of presence around green. One player worried about the flank. Formal has dead silence. RCDs has it ready to go. RC is going to pop it. Dead silence in, but he might be dead. Gonna get caught, trapped between two players. Formal drops as well. Mutineers clutching up. Gunless may be the nade enough to give him a chance in this round, but it's just gonna be a one versus three now with 25 seconds to go. He's gotta work the plan. Another big one-on-one -on -one win. Can it be the ace in the clutch from Gunless? It cannot. Swiftly shut down by Mutineers. Another round on the board is Arsenis, man. I thought when he pops that mid-map, maybe he can make the play with Daddy, but well, I he mean, gets tagged instantly. He doesn't expect proceeding inside of the vet room. I mean, that's what happens when you have a slow offensive round and don't fight for mid-map control. I mean, maybe if Florida gets a little too aggressive, they find well, one, but when it comes I, down to it, they, they can all just sort of make those trades a little I bit I think easier. he expected him. I think that's who he was going to push, but he got tagged from behind as soon as he goes to make the play, so he's just scrambling away. As Pristini gets the angle, as he gets a call from his teammate, he just gets caught. That's big. That's a first defensive round win of this game. Can Chicago respond? Pristini, he uses dead silence as he's pushing out the crates. He might get the first blood. He's able to do just that. The dead silence pop, the push top crates, the kill. The bomb's planted as well. I mean, I, I just love this from Pristina. He is just pushing it. He just doesn't care. I mean, we've seen it a few times hurt them, but he is stuck to his guns. Finding those first bloods. Numbers the mutineers still. The odds increase ever more. Gunless again trying to be the hero, but Frosty finds him from behind. Back to back rounds now for mutineers. Well, three in a row, right, for mutineers. 4-2 edge. I, I'm just curious if they win this, what Pristini's going to do on stage. I'm sure on both sides you'll see a lot of, a lot of love. A lot of respect, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of respect. But I'd love to see him do what he said, though. I'm screaming in nah, your face. Just for the show. <laughs> Chicago have got to get this round. They have to. And Skies with the first blood. They combine the nades and gunless. Taken out so quickly. Envoy able to get away. I think takes some, maybe some friendly fire as he hits the edge as well, but he stays up. Caught with an eight out. Mox and Bristini chained together two. Sky swords forward. Hunt spin are crumbling. They are falling before our eyes. One more round needed for Florida. And it just starts with that first blood. I mean, what we've seen from Chicago a few times is they've had some slow offenses. This time, they, you know, they just don't worry about it. They get aggressive. Envoy uses dead silence, tries to get to the crates. But yeah, the first blood from Gunless, and then they just pounce on out, use their numbers advantage. Now four rounds in a row for Florida. Huntsman, your London champs at risk of not getting back to the final. They have to rip off four straight rounds. We know it's possible. We just saw the Mutineers do it. But the first blood again to the Mutineers. It's Frosty with the opening pick. Formal backing up with dead silence. Sight control over to Mutineers. Again, just picking them apart. And when there has to be trades, there's not trades. There's just not trades. Our cities and gunless. It all falls to them to try and clutch up. 2v3. They all, they all go. They all just go forward. They're trying to flank. 2v2 now. This is the type of momentum shift. You still have Havoc as well. Havoc is in a good spot. Mox is set up deep. Connects on the shots. It's all to our city. He's a try and clutch. He can't do it. As Florida gets the W, Pristini wins the battle versus brother. And there's the hype.
nothing but love between Pristini and Arsides, but what a series yeah, I mean, for gets, the first time they match up, and, up and, and then it's like you see him and it's like, I ah, shoot. <laughs> and you see their mom, like what a, what a mix of emotions that's gotta be. No matter what, one was going home a loser. It's gotta be, it's gotta be tough. But if anything, you know, it was the pair, you saw Arsides win, now can Pristini do it? Can he get the W? What a moment between these two. Well, we're going to take a look at uh, Game 5 stats and Pristini. I mean, we talked about it. He was just imposing his will on the map. He was just so fast. He stuck to his guns, nine kills. It felt like Florida just had such a massive lead in those first bloods, and they take advantage of it. Pristini versus Arsides, a match for the ages, and we've got him on stage. Thank you very much. Yes, this is the PlayStation Instant Reaction live on stage here. I'm with the brothers. A very emotional match. I think everyone can only imagine what it's got to be like playing on a stage like this up against your very own brother. You guys have been a duo throughout your whole career, and you can see the emotions here. Match aside, what did this mean to you two to go up against each other today? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's a good. He's a good player. He's a good brother. He's good everything. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, good for him. I'm happy he won. Uh, sucks that we lost. We played like shit. Sorry. Um, I just, I'm just pissed off, and uh, we actually threw that, and uh, we got to play better. You got to play better there from the Huntsman side now. Pristini, you guys come out on top. It's got to mean the world to you here. What does this matchup mean to you? Um, I, I won't even get into it. I don't, I don't want to start anything. Um, he's my twin brother. We're the closest people we have in our lives. And uh, <laughs> uh, I just I don't want to go into detail, but... It, it's an amazing feeling, you know, uh, to be un underrated all this time and f do something major without him and prove that I don't need anyone in particular is a really good feeling. Well, obviously, mom and stage today, the love from this crowd so real. Shout out to both of you guys who have been teammates, now competitors. And, uh, Rossini, you're in the grand finals now. Are you ready to go up against the Atlanta Face? Uh, absolutely. Um, after this, it's back to work, uh, going back and going to do what we can to, you know, prep for the match and uh, hopefully we can come out with a dub. Um, I think we've proven that we're not a team to be underestimated. Um, I know it may look like it online, but um, we've definitely proven ourselves and I'm proud and I'm, I'm excited to go up against FaZe. Well, congratulations again. All the love to you guys. Love both of you. What a great match up there all the way down to game five. Coming up next, we have the hype battles, and then it's the Florida Mut Mutineers up against the Atlanta Fays. Don't go anywhere.